truth be told, the initial idea they brought to me was not one that I liked, right? Dull surprise, like at all. But James and lead designer Brian Gottlieb continued to work with me to get my input and feedback and further feedback on ideas. And through a very long process, again, this has been in the works for well over a year now. Wait, what? A year? It's been in the works for a year. So, so that must mean, of course, that everything we got in Round the Tables is exactly as promised. Yeah. I, I gotta be the one, because I'm pretty sure no one's no one's overtly interested in this, right? But in all honesty, this is the first big L that I've seen Legend Story Studios really take. And that is, to put it simply, the round the table product is not what it was promised. So despite being a year in the work, a year in the making to finalize these four decks and flesh them out and make sure that they're all, you know, highly playable competitive to some degree in UPF. I mean, the professor himself does tout them as some of the most powerful blitz decks, but I do have some grievances with that, right? And the main thing that you'd think they'd be able to accomplish within a year is either to A, market it correctly, or B, fulfill everything that's listed on the little tagline, because this has been plastered in a lot of different places. I don't know if you've cracked into around the table. I don't know if you've thumbed through the decks. I don't know if you've thought about them, but let me go through it with you, right? So again, I know, you know, people aren't going to be super interested in this because again, Bright Lights is, is super overshadowing around the table. And I kind of wish I kept up with the spoilers, but the truth be told, I read a thousand new cards. I did a video on this, right? Going off the card numbers, everything has to be new. And that is super exciting, right? Because Except it's not because we finally have all the cards. And again, they, they fall grossly short of 100 new cards and in all honesty right they they didn't put as much thought not a year's worth to me in any of the decks aside from ira brevin in itself is is overall a simple mechanic fun don't get me wrong fun for upf but it's not a complex new dynamic for guardian the professor in himself right if you pull out the cards that are featured in bright lights as well which you know i'd assume was probably in the works prior to this well, then he only has three new cards. So altogether, round the table has nowhere near a hundred new cards. Now, of course, is this actually a big deal, right? We were promised over a hundred new cards. We we get, uh, I have done the math. We've looked through cards and we'll go through them shortly. But uh, if you if you take, you know, the, the best versions of everything, like the alt art quicken, the, the professor's cards, there's 70 new cards, which is okay. Right, it's it's close to a hundred. It's not a hundred. So again, is there merit to not just saying over fifty new cards, having it a accurate? But the the big thing that I do want to sort of stress is we have gone through a lot of of cycles of LSS hyping something up, of promising certain designs and features, and then what we get right is still factual, but not to the the built up standard or the desires of the community. Right, the case in point is bright lights and the shadows art cards. They definitely fell short amongst the community perspective. We have the expense slot in bright lights, right? Which, you know, again, face value cards, not cards, although you got the Techlo Foundry card, but then that in itself is not expansion. It's still very iffy, right? What this means is nowhere near to the degree of support that Dust Till Dawn had, right? In the terms of the amount of cards for other classes. And altogether, is this, is this fair to just let this slide, right? We were promised 100 new cards and we'll go through what exactly we did get. But I think, you know, to some degree, we're past the point where things should be hyped up to sell, right? We don't need shock and awe. We need, we need proper information that is also shared accurately by Legendary Studios. Again, I, I bring it back to the whole, if I asked you what the next sets were and what they'd feature, could you tell me? Could you exactly tell me, oh, they'll be exactly like Bright Lights with the expansion slot? In that case, what was outside is just another test run, right? Our, our inside knowledge of what is going on at LSS, to me, again, is growing more concerning because at this point, from a company perspective, I would assume, right, that you, you should be giving out roadmaps. You should be saying, well, these are the upcoming sets for the year, right? This is what they'll feature. You know, prepare your audience and prepare them for spending, right? But no, so around the table, I, I got a zero or not. Again, I'm pretty sure no one's going to address it or talk about it. So I feel like I should. Right. Mainly because I am ticked off about it because, again, Bright Lights is OK. 
I understand its value. I understand the excitement for a lot of people. To me, it's just an okay set. I'm still enjoying it, but I wouldn't go out of my way, right? If I didn't have the, the ability to buy, I wouldn't buy, right? I would absolutely skip this set. And I was looking forward to round the tape. I stopped following the spoilers. I stopped watching the professor's videos. And then I get it, I open it, I thumb through the cards. And what would you know? Reprint, 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 reprint. Despite again, featuring a hundred new cards. So let's take a look at the list and go through what exactly is new. So we'll start off right here at the bottom. So we have the Vigor token at 107, right? So in terms of over a hundred new cards, 101, meaning that they have five, six, six cards to play with. Yeah, six, simple math. Okay, quick it. It's all art, so we'll give it to them, right? Crabton Tiger, not new, one. Copper, not new, two. Praetory Strikes, three, four. Leg Tap, five. Bittering Thorns, yellow, six. Uh, Blessings of Q and most of the Q cards, right? Even just in, in Ira's deck alone, they fall short of that goal of 100. And then in terms of the Professor, this is the other big thing to me, right? Again, the only new cards are the Professor, his Blaster, and Apocalypse Automaton, right? So curiously, again, if this is designed for UPF, right? Surely they could have actually, you know, done more things for UPF. The Evo set, despite being for UPF, it does feature in bright lights. So whether or not it was thought up before or after, I, I don't know, I can't tell you. But what I'm trying to get at is this is a curated deck more so than a, you know, a specifically made product. And the same can be said for basically Melody. Reverent, again, has the new mechanic, Flyway of Chivalry. But at the same time, your deck is basically just 50% Chivalry, right? A little bit less, but it's still, it, it was, I think it's 12 cards. So it's still a huge amount dedicated to Shivering. And we do get some great new cards and new things for Guardian. Don't get me wrong. Same with Ira and Crouching Tiger, right? These two decks definitely have been fleshed out the most. But in terms of Melody, right? Which was probably a lot of people's big takeaway because this is a new class. It's our first real showcasing of Bard, right? We get fun, like we get a great, you know, finisher, a way to actually make it competitive. So you think the, the thing that they could do is tie in more ways to use fine light, right? To again, spend the copper. We're not in blue mostly. And we're chock full of potions, potions, right? And this wouldn't be so bad. We get Coax Commotion, we get Life of the Party, right? So them printing and putting in X cards is not a big deal. So wouldn't it have made, you know, significantly more sense to also give cash out with Melody to really go into, you know, trying to build up money and, and spend it on final acts? rather than what we get, which is definitely not a deck playable outside of UPF. There are so many different avenues that could have easily been explored. You could have had copper pay off into something. You could have had more interactions with everyone around you rather than just play a single song, turn over. Even the block in itself, why make it pay three when you could have made it spend the copper that is Melody's whole gimmick, her whole generation is about busking, right? Instead, we get this weird jumble of cards that is basically just sit in a corner and twiddle your thumbs, right? Now, obviously I want Final Act to work and more cards to support Final Act, I would love, but that doesn't have to be the gimmick. I understand that the gimmick is meant to be the fun, flavorful bard of the UPF group. But even that to me in the current iteration of this deck is just, just not there, right? It is not a great deck, it's not to the stand of the other decks in this product. And on the other side of the coin, right, to actually turn to a Blitz deck, there should have been more cards to support Final Act. Outside of the songs, there's four actions for Melody. Final Act Attack, that's your only attack. Interlude, Crowd Control, right, they're your defensive options, and then Encore. Encore to cycle back what? Only Final Act. Two cards straight off the, the top of my head, right, that could have made this work. For UPF, you could have had something that buffs another player. If that player then finishes off someone, you get to find final act, right? And pitch something, or even just find final act. You buff them, help them take someone out and you get final act in hand, or just simply a way to find final act and pull it out of your deck. If this is your big payout, the whole reason you're generating copper, you just have to roll the dice and hope you find it in a 40 card deck, two cards in a 40 card deck. Instead, we get a handful of songs, right, that are only advantageous to your opponent, not, no benefit whatsoever for you outside of copper, and copper is not really a benefit, 
right? Even for final act, it is hard. It is not a valid reason to play these outside of UPF. And then a handful of potions, right? This deck is not a blitz ready deck. It is nowhere near. You take this to blitz and you're going to get stomped. Absolutely. The professor as well, because a lot of your dependencies are for UPF, it's, it's better, but you, again, go crack bright lights and you can easily build a better blitz deck to, to start getting into the game and stuff like that. Uh, even in the way of the Evo Scattershot, I know a big thing that he was pushing is full play sets, right? Again, blitz is not the staple format. So the playset issue in blitz decks has never been an issue to me because, you know, if you want, I mean, a singing steel blade is the big one, but I think most people want that for class constructed anyway. So you have to buy three regardless. But in terms of making this deck more well-rounded, you could easily cut, you know, one of the copies of the Evo Techloscope, this Evo set, and you could stick in Steel Sentry. It's sorry, not Steel Sentry, it's just Sentry. You could stick in the Sentry Evo set, right? And that's already a better, well-rounded deck because you still have the, the block payoff because once you have this script, you can't equip it, it again. You have an easier time working towards this. You have payoff for then stacking, right? It's just, it doesn't seem like this deck and melody have been thought through and definitely not spent a year's time crafting. Now, Ira, Ira is a different case. Ira is a beautiful deck, right? This is definitely a blitz ready deck. Reverence to some degree, but mostly he's just fun for UPF, but again, really thought out. So half of the product to me is fine. Half of it is not. Half of it does not feel like it's been thought about for a year, right? It feels like, again, the professor, they've just taken staples from bright lights. And again, there are a lot of reprints here. And then every other card, except for the Professor himself, Techno Blaster and Apocalypse Automaton are featured in Bright Lights. So whether you st you want to say this came first or that came first, doesn't matter. Uh, Melody, again, your only cards are Interlude, Final Act, Encore, your songs and Crowd Control, right? And the songs in itself, having no benefits, no way to chain together, play more, right? They already have an upside to them. So a go again is not a big deal on them or ways to combo them. But what? You do life of the party. And if you're lucky, you get go again. You do coax commotion. Doesn't have go again. You can create the quicken token, but that doesn't pay off till the next go. And quicken doesn't actually trigger off the songs, right? Triggers off of attacks or swinging with your weapon, which destroys your weapon, right? This deck does not mesh well together. It's a fun time to sit in a corner and just, you know, <laughs> play out different things, try and stack potions and just be ignored by everyone else in UPF to then try and go for your final act. But this deck could have significantly been better, right? Especially if they were going to stick in all these reprints, if they just tuned it right, right? If they tuned it around final act, if they gave thought to the big finisher, because in Ira, the big finisher is the, the great new card, Salt the Wounds, right? So you go a bunch of Crouching Tigers into Salt the Wounds. Uh, Brethren is obviously stacking up your tokens and then going for some heavy hits with the new tower effect, which is great, right? New keyword, es essentially, more, more, well, actually we did get a new keyword, we've got ambush, right? But I was gonna say the deck is focused on improving Crouching Tiger, which is great. That's the sort of go-to stable for a ninja at this point to me, right? Teclo, it's fine. Again, it's just bright lights things. So it's not extraordinary in itself. Just feels like the blitz deck you'd get from bright lights. Again, you'd probably have to tweak the, the weapon and the items because the weapon by itself is not that great. And then Melody, again, I would have to say this was probably the big fan favorite for everyone who's seen this product, at least from what I've seen. And it is by far the worst deck. Now, in terms of, of reprints, right? So again, new, new, in bright lights. So whether or not you count them, it's up to you. In bright lights, whether or not you count it, it's up to you. New, bright lights, bright lights, reprint, reprint, bright lights, reprint, reprint, bright lights, reprint, reprint, bright lights, reprint, sorry, bright lights, bright lights. Reprint, bright lights, okay? So overall, uh, in the Professor, if you count the bright lights card, that's fine. There are eight reprints in total and 18 new cards. Again, the only way you get to that magic 100 number is if you you buy into the, the stupid mentality of this card's new and we gave you two of it. So this is a new card. Now, I, I will say in their defense, if this has sort of been, they crafted these decks because the Professor does note that he wasn't happy with the first iteration. So the craft of these decks, he wanted the playset mechanic at least, so they had to cut a bunch of cards, right? That's that's something at least. But again, if if it's been in the works for a year, you've had all these revisions, 
then you should be able to know that you can't market it as over 100 new cards, right? It is just a blatant, infactual statement versus, again, these other statements like Dust or Dawn, CIS art cards, uh, the expanded slots, you know, anything that they've promoted and tried to hype up that then sort of falls a little flat. They're still factual, unlike Round the Table. Then in terms of our new Guardian, obviously all the main chivalry stuff is new. The new tower mechanics are new. Chokeslam, not. Disable, not. Uh, Chokeslam, Crane Your Crush, Disable. Again, reprints. By far, I think it's the one of the newest decks, right? Brotherant has uh, 17 new cards, five reprints. No, Iris. No, no. Yeah, that's right. 17 new cards, right? The Professor's at 18, but again, they're all featured in Bright Lights. And then five reprints because the majority of your deck is still chivalry. And the new Blocking Hank, right? It's a good idea. Do, is it necessary? It's power crept... Um, defense reactions right so i like them if they're just blank cards but the ones actually have effects feels like we came up with a problem right we can cancel out defense reactions through x cards like command and conquer so now here's the way to get around that and I, I feel like it's a bit early for that that type of power creep but yeah and then of course we have melody right new just fun flavorful for upf don't get me wrong these decks are great for upf for just having some fun they definitely are not Blitz Ray decks, with the exception of Ira and probably the Professor, right? But Ira definitely. And then Coke's Commotion. M, uh, it's fun things, right? Fun for UPF. Doesn't do anything for the Melody deck. So, yeah. Then we have Life of the Party, same thing. Goes with Crazy Brew, but then, you know, it doesn't really do things for Melody. Potions themselves are already slow, so to put them with a slow hero like Melody is even worse. The songs are great. I wish we got more of them, right? Because it's all gimmick. Some sort of attack song would have been great. Some sort of like uh, stunning song, you know, something that I guess creates something similar to Frostbite, but not Frostbite, maybe, or even just Frostbite. You know, something fun, flavorful. So you have the, the duality of Bard, right? These are the playful songs. Then you have the actual songs that are in your favor and sort of alluring and misdirecting. Crowd control is a great block, right? Because you can pay to improve it. So you can pitch a card, you can hold on to the card. Uh, the plus to opposing heroes, again, so much of this is centered around UPF except for the new cards that's that Ira got, right? Again, Ira feels like a, a fully fledged new Blitz deck and everything else feels like, well, we need to squeeze in UPF. So how can we do that while still making call? Reverence, right? Obviously done well. Professor, I'm still gonna gripe that again, it's just completely overlapped with Bright Lights and then Melody. Sigil of Solace, I get its input again, slow. I mean, if there was, you know, what else would be cool? So we have ways to generate copper of damage. If there's ways to heal your, or if anyone gained life and you get something, right? Those sort of dualities where you really are towing the line of giving your opponent a huge benefit to then get some sort of payoff. Because payoff of copper is not great, right? Even the final act um, that the professor shows off, I think he did for 18, which is not gonna be enough. A new PF maybe, but can be easily shut down. So yeah, Melody feels not, thought out enough right you have defensive but at the same time your whole point is to just act like a ghost and not be hit right even if crowd control was something to to get a benefit from protecting someone else sort of like brethren that would be a cool interaction uh, and of course potions which are the big final number of cards five of them right so overall melody gets uh 20 new cards mainly because of the equipment so that while that is fantastic right again it is the same old stuff i would have liked to have seen a lot more going on, but oh well. All right, and then of course we have Ira. So Ira is obviously not new, Edge of Autumn's not new. Uh, every bit of equipment is great, right? Love the design. Again, this is by far the most blitz ready deck. Ira's gotta be the most impactful deck from this. Tearing Shuko is obviously not new. Bittering Thorns Red is new, but then Bittering Thorns Yellow is not, right? Flying Kick is not. Uh, what else do we have? Leg tap is not the pouncing key. Sorry, I keep mis mis mispronouncing it. Key unbound and blessing of key are not new. And then predatory strikes are not new. So overall, uh, Ira has 12 new cards and 14 reprints. So just to sum it up again, Professor, if you count the bright light cards, is 18 new, eight reprints. Reverence, 17 new, five reprints. Melody, 20 new, eight reprints. Ira, 12 new, 14 reprints. Tokens, three new, if you count the quicken alt art, and then two reprints so overall there are 70 new cards right which is still good 
Again, more interconnective play, similar to Ira for all the decks would have been fantastic, especially if it's been in the works for a year. And then there's 37 reprints. So shy of that 100, unless of course you double it, you buy into the hole, it's new, we gave you two, so now it's doubled, right? In which case you get 140, sure, that's over 100. But in actuality, right, there was nothing wrong with just saying featuring over 50 new cards. This is the statement you're gonna lead with and you're gonna you know, plaster all, across, all over the place, right? And you're not gonna spoil much and you're just gonna allow the community to speculate and hype this up over this idea, then you need to follow through on it. And same with everything else. If you're going to allow the community to hype and speculate, right? The payoff has to be close to it. And to me, this is not close. And it is the first misstep for me by Legend Story Studios. And it is a shame that it is going to really go under the radar because this product is just sort of a novelty product to a lot of people, right? But yeah, do you do you think it's acceptable? Do you think I'm just being a dick and nitpicking, right? Or do you think that if we're promised a feature, we should get that feature? Anyway, hope you enjoyed. See ya.